there guys and welcome back to the latest episode in our uh, health and safety dashboard i think uh, i've about reached the final version now i know i keep saying that i'm not going to be doing any more but um i'm not really sure how much further we can go with this so uh, here here we have the uh, logo page i've taken the logo off because this is a full version that i am using in my workplace uh, and obviously for data protection and GDPR, I've had to remove uh, all identifying features of that company um, because obviously they wouldn't want that broadcasting publicly. So I've, all I've taken out of it is the actual identifying features uh, of the company. Everything else is exactly the same. So we start on the uh, home screen. And as you can see, in, in that area there would be the uh, logo normally um, but I, I've taken that off so it, we've got the HSC management system in 2021 and you'll see from those of you that was watching uh, the previous ones that there are already a couple of new features so we've got the safe days there uh, and that counts the, the safe days without a lost time accident so it's basing it on the days from a, a lost time accident because if you record every accident you're never going to get above you know a, a dozen at best i would have thought um you know if somebody comes once in a plaster that's technically an accident so you need you need to re record it and it'll zero so i've just done it on the lost time accidents so uh, and so that's basically a better and a more accurate key metric uh and then below we've got the accident frequency rate and that has been worked out using the standard criteria um and that's basically saying with the instance that we've got we're expected to get 114 uh, accidents in a 12 month period okay so the dates there and i had the logo behind the date as well so it fitted in nicely uh, just to enhance it so we below we've got a block of 30 tabs uh, and each has got uh, information in it uh, so we go to the dashboard you can see that's the familiar dashboard with the stuff in there straight away you'll see there's a new feature there and that is telling you the next audit so in the audit schedule page it takes its information from there telling you telling you when your next audit is and when it's due or what well where it's due at and where it's due uh, and then you go a bit further down and you can see straight away we've got lost time injury frequency rate that's LTIFR and um, because we haven't had any it's not at the moment and the lost time injury incident rate uh, and this is just a brief explanation there of, of what it is so it's saying there lost time injury incident rate it's for 1000 people multiply the number of incidents by 100 then divide it by the number of people uh, and we've got 1700 people approximately and for the lost time injury frequency rate incident frequency rate that equals multiply the number of lost time injuries by 1 million then divide the number by the total number of hours worked so so you, you need to know your number of hours of work to get an accurate one and then the productive days for example on here like it says if your organization had 10 employees and there are only five days lost due to health and safety issues your productive days would be 99.86% which is 3,645 days divided by 3,650 available days times 100 and that gives you your score. You might not want that, it, it does sound complicated but it's not really when you think about it. Uh, the highest incident rate, so on our data input tab uh, it will amass how many um, incidents is total and it will tell you which, which category is the highest. Um, and then it will also tell you which site has got the highest incident rate and that's also taken from that page and on here you'll see task manager and it'll say you'll see straight away it says non-completed that's not actually true because there is another feature I put in there um, which this is a, a byproduct of that really so I might even take that out because uh, and you'll see why when I get to that tab why we might take that out uh, audit actions uh, that's that stayed the same and so that's basically it for the dashboard and for those of you that are, are um, interested if we go to the uh, home page you scroll down to a hundred you will see there 24th of July 1st of January that's where it's getting the safe days from 
so I started it from the 1st of January this year and that date is today so the formula for that is equals today open parenthesis close parenthesis and, and in any, if you type that in any cell that will give you the today's date or just put equals now with open and close parentheses so if you're looking where that is to change it that's where it is you can and then you can move it and put it where you want to uh, so we go to our data entry page then next and you'll see that the LTIFR and the LTIIR and the average uh, accident freight accident frequency rate get it right Steve per year is 114 as we saw on the home screen uh, so you see the sites now are taking them out uh, the, the names and just put site one etc um, and so when you've done your audits that's where you'll put your scores I've just put fictitious ones in at the moment just to give us a, a relative picture on our on our dashboard on the speedo graph there so that's why I've done that otherwise it'll just be zero okay so we go back to the data entry tab um, scroll down again for the COVID audits sites one to whatever it happens to be for your particular site your key metrics and lead, uh, leading indicators stays the same as it was on the previous ones and for the incidents this is this are a few little changes on here so we've got the sites one to six on here you can extend that to whatever if you've got um, I don't know you so your organization has got 20 sites and you just insert a column you, know, you, you just you know right click on there right left click and then insert and then that will then put a, 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 a column in there and then you just drag all the information over uh, so you can do that or if you haven't got that many you can reduce them just the same it's entirely up for yourselves um, so everything's the same here you'll see I've left a few comments in there I did that deliberately just to show you how I'm monitoring it I'm trying to come up with a better way of identifying so we're like you, you hover over a site and it'll come up with a balloon telling you how many what the incidents are because uh, at the minute it just totals it up numerically as you put them in and so I just put them comments in just to see see what they are um, and we have a an accident reported system called Datix which is something that healthcare and NHS use uh, and we use that as well being a healthcare organisation and I run a report on that this last week just to see what the incidents were so these these are live figures for our sites so you'll see down here the lost time accidents that's that is where the changes come from the um, safe days uh, and also if you if you add a, a thing on here I showed you this on the last one if you say right lost time accident we've had a lost time accident at site one so I'm afraid we're going to have to add that in it comes up as soon as you've done that saying important please check that the incident is not reportable under RIDO now you might yeah obviously if you're the health and safety professional inputting that information you will know that but if you've got people under you or other managers that are filling this in on a shared drive uh, you don't the last thing you want to do is is for you to miss that they've entered something on there so that will just pop up just to say check it's not a riddle uh, and then that will prompt them to either contact yourself or another health and safety uh, person at your site to ask if it's a riddle uh, but there are messages in there that might just tell them if it's a riddle or not and then they're obviously going to contact you and say we need to make a riddle how do we do that okay so if we if I now enter that one in there and then that's caught there so we'll clear that off and then go back to our dash to our home page you'll see that safe days now has gone back to zero uh, and as of yet I haven't I haven't been able to get that to zip to start counting again from the following day without removing that in information um, so I'm so that's something I'm, I'm working on at the moment uh, to try and find a either a bit of coding or a formula to do that so just to prove the concept to take that out again go back to the home page and it'll reset it okay so that's where I think we are on that and here is I've just put that in because I, I uh, uploaded a, a graphic of what I wanted to do to a colleague yesterday so I just put that information in there just to make a quick and easy cut and paste into the uh, into the email 
Now, if you want to change any information, um, as I've not, I've not showed you where this is before, I've only told individuals that have requested it. If you scroll down to around about a page a thousand, once you get to the high end of the 900s, you'll start and see sorts of boxes. Um, so all this is where all the lost time incident rates is, is worked out and the calculations for it. Uh, and then as you go down, this is the audit traffic light information and your average and your health and safety task status, your audit action status. These are the formulas for these that tells it when to change red, orange or green. So that's where the formulas are for there. So you will just change, let's say for instance on the um, on the audits, we, we have it from 0 to 25 to turn red. You might say you want it 45 or 15, you just change that figure there and it will change to red when it gets to 15. But just make sure that you change these as well, just to make it corresponding and to make it legible because you could end up putting a, fig a value in there that's not covered on here let's say if you say 0 to 15 and then 16 uh, to 75 or 17 to 75 you've got one missing uh, and the 16 so you just need to make sure that it says it equals or greater than I think it does I've done that already for you anyway okay so back up to the top okay so we'll go back to our home page then uh, the next one is the reports tab so on the reports tab there's not a lot changed on there you've just got the and you can see you know i've just taken out name that and put joe blogs um, because obviously i've got to protect people's and, and you can see i did an automation and it's it, I, I got a, a typo in there because i've said it once and i'll say it again i'm not the best and i type too fast for me on good and don't error check um as in that case but you get the drift that's just showing you the, the the details so you just type in near the site and that's um, and if you don't want to record COVID audits you just select it and take it out uh, but just because it's on the reports page so you won't affect any formulas by taking stuff out on here and again you've got the 0% completed and I'll show you why that is uh, uh, shortly so they've got cost assessments policies and procedures audit tasks as you've seen before the risk assessments um, and I've changed here, I've just put some arrows in, I'm, I think I mentioned this on the last video that uh, one of the managers said well what, which is the highest scoring site because he didn't think this this here was related to that in his, and uh, that's senior managers for you. So we've got the uh, sites 1 to 6, uh, the outstanding audits is 15 because none have been done that's why um, and it's saying it's showing red site low performance manage uh, notify management and that refers to the one that's in red there okay so the next audit site one due in five days and that's what you saw on the home screen and it's just duplicating that here uh, site visits planned and one so we've, got, we've added another tab called site visits so you'll see that on there and I'll show, I'll show you that when we get to it at the bottom again you'll see the highest incident type is allergies which again was on the home screen and the site with the highest incidence is site 2 okay so we're going up so going up and up let's go back down let's see which is the highest one so there's your allergies and it's showing it there so that's the highest one <coughs> Your lost time injury frequency rate, accident frequency rate, and your lost time injury incident rate is all copied down on there. Site information there for your traffic lights, you just change that to suit your, what yours is. And that's that for the whole reports page. The full sites list I've changed, I've taken that out because obviously it's, it's data protection again, but you'll just put a page in there with your site locations uh, and it will pick it up from there you just change the link if, if you don't want it uh, RIDO reporting that that will take you to the HSC website on the uh, COVID reporting restrictions so it'll give you the latest information the tables page is where a lot of the information is so for the team members names you'll just change them in there and they will show up on the drop down list accordingly same with task type you can change them current status and site locations you just add them in there and your visit requester that's for the audits uh, site visits correction uh, so you put all your information in there okay I think there's a bit of there's another one further across isn't there 
all right so I've, I've reduced it oh yeah reduce the size so that's all right okay so that's just it for the d data um collection screen on the tables now we go to the meeting planner you'll have seen this uh, already you see it's loading there it's loading a calendar and it's a little bit slow um, because my system is producing a video whilst i'm making a video as well and doing a few other tasks and it's about 10 years old getting on so it's it's fairly slow okay, so don't really need to wait for that to load it will get there eventually so here we've got a meeting planner so it's a health and safety related meeting planner so all i put in there is just a list a list of things uh, i haven't changed them as much so you just put in a health and safety meeting dsc meeting whatever it happens to be um location where, where it's going to be what which site it's going to be at uh, who's organised the meeting? So you do that text that down from the uh, drop down box. Scheduled, priority, meeting date, time, how long it lasts. So if that meeting is going to be 12 o'clock and you want it to last now, you could, to, to try and make it a little bit easier, you can just put in the time it will last there and then it will tell you there when the end time is. Okay, so it's just a little gimmick I put in there just to give you the time when it's going to end. So it helps you organise your, your, your meeting planner really. And that's what the calendar is there for. Because you can then just select it when it's going to be it's August, September, whatever. So for instance, if I say the meeting date is um, July, let's go back to July on here. And so the meeting date is now on the 29th. You click OK to override and it will input that date automatically into that box. Okay, so whichever box you select, it will put it into there for you. Okay, so uh, I hope you find that uh, useful. So then the, the, the other feature I have added, you will see uh, on your meeting planner, there's an archive meetings tab. And as you go into there, that will put in the meetings that you've completed. Okay, so it goes to the home page. Now, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If I just take, I can I can just delete them off. Okay, so we've deleted them out. Go back to the meetings homepage. Go to the meeting planner. Uh, right, so that meeting there, we we we've, we've done that meeting. We had it a bit early, so we, we're going to put uh, completed. So it's graded it out because it's completed. Now you'll see. Two, two little buttons down here because um, as, and I want to show you what that is we've got a cancelled one so if we cancel a meeting it's greyed out as if it was completed same as is, is on, on the completed um, and I put a bit of code in there to, to be able to create a button so if you you'll get a list of completed and your list gets really long you can take out your completed and arc and uh, cancel items so you, it will archive them so if we go to complete archive we uh, sorry I'm, I don't, I'm talking out my backside if we want to archive the completed meetings then we just press that button there and that will take out as you'll see the completed all we're left with now is the cancelled so if you go then then to the archive meetings you'll see now it's put it in it's put it down there for some reason that I'm not really sure why but it's put it there um, and again go to the meeting planner and now we want to take out the cancelled ones and you press that one and it takes them out and that will have put that in there as well okay and let's put it in in order and same with your date if you organize a meeting you can you can type your meetings in this but in these boxes here in in any order that you want and it will sort them for you within the soonest meeting coming at the top so they will be in date orders you can see there the start date 15th of july okay so you've got three consecutive uh, and it will mirror that when you go onto your archive page okay so you go to the task manager and that is very much the same exactly the same in fact um going to there not started so we've got say uh, ashgate manor pack testing let's say completed that um completed go down there you've got the same buttons down here archive no longer required so if there's something no longer required rather than cancel you tick that and it will take them out archive completed so we've completed that one now 
uh, we archive it completed scroll up you'll see that the Ashgate man of pack testing has now gone so we go to the home page archive tasks and you'll see Ashgate Manor because it was an earlier date 15th of January it's now up in there um, and, and that will add them as in a date order as well okay now the reason you will now you'll, you'll now realize the reason why the the graph on the on the uh, on the dashboard page is showing zero is because when I've got completed in there so if I put that in as completed um, there it will if I go back to the dashboard it should now update that with a figure and there it is 13 percent and that's why it was saying no because once you archive them you're taking out all the completers and this chart is looking for the completed tax in that in that planner and if it doesn't see any then it's going to it's going to think you haven't completed any so that is a little uh, I wouldn't say error uh, but it, it could just mean you can take that out or you can leave your completers in if you if you're only having periodic meetings say once every few weeks or so but if you have meetings that are more frequent then you you, you might want to take you know take take out your completed ones so if i just say the search date for incidents since may we come say we completed that which we have actually take it out it's completed go to the task manager the archive tasks and then you look down the scroll uh, search date for incidents since may and it's put it in the correct order and then that's where it is okay so um I find that useful. I don't know if you do. If you don't like anything in this, it's obviously it's once you've got it, it's yours. You do what you want with it. And if you say I don't like the way he's got that set out, um, I want to change it differently. I want it more uh, in a thinner version rather than a wider screen. You can do you can do do whatever. It's yours to do what you want with. And uh, if I just show you how you go about that, if you would just like cut that and then put it there, if you want. Okay, uh, it will still work the same. The link will still, you'll not take the link out if you cut it. Um, cut, put it back, paste, and it's there. And then when you've got that, all you do is just go into there. You can even just drag the cells above it down just to refill in that page. Okay, so don't worry about that. If, it's, if you want to reorganize any of these, then feel free to do so. I'll try to put them in 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 color code like the meeting planner is is, is a pinky pinky salmon color the audit schedules are in the same color and the task manager policies and procedures etc so i'll try to call color coordinate it the limitation of course with um, excel is you don't get a lot of choice on colors so uh we, there's nothing really in here to look at there's, there's nothing changed on these whatsoever from the previous one Okay, so we've done the, the audit schedule. So again, if you want to schedule an audit, it's on there, and that's where on the home page it tells me when the next one was due in five days. So it's taking it from here. Uh, so today being twenty fourth, and that's on the twenty fifth, at twenty ninth. Get it right. So so there's nothing changed in there, um, and you can, um, if you want to complete that one off. I don't think I've got it. Oh, I'll try looking in. So I'll put it in council. It's confirmed. I'm looking for completed. And I'm looking at wrong tab. So that's now completed. And as you see, the same system on here. Uh, site one archive. Cut that audit has been completed. So you click multi arc completed to archive. It's taken that out. So you go from your audit schedule to your archived audits and site one appears there. Okay, because it, the, due, the due date was the 29th and that puts them in order as well. Okay, so again it's a, just another feature. And um, we've got audit actions. And the only thing, I haven't put a button on here to archive completed actions mainly because you would expect these to be completed pretty quickly so you can take them all out once it's been done 
um, but if you want to if you want to I might even add an extra page on there just to archive audit actions um, but it's just a case of copying what's on the the meeting planner and the task manager and copying the links changing the links accordingly um, so uh, if you need, if you need any help with coding I mean I, I don't know the first thing about coding the coding that I put in here I've, I've used from looking at examples on the internet and changing that coding to suit to suit this uh, so that's why it's been an awful long process because I'm not the brightest button in the box to be fair when it comes to juggling with figures and formulas uh, so I've had to do a lot a lot has been trial and error so right, so we've got next the risk assessment so that stays the same there's no difference in there same with the actions log same in there and you can put a complete button in there as well if you want I might even do that um, I, I probably won't do a video on it because it's you've already seen it and then you, your log data all the information is in there that, and that's where it gets the drop down list from okay so the other extra page is a site visit planner and again it's just that same as the others so we've done a, a site visit planner I've got to put the uh, where I'm going to put that box to on there so if you want to think well how do I get the information the risk because as soon as you click off this page it'll disappear because it's locked now to change that we'll we'll do it together here you need to be in your data page anyway so if you got right click on the page that you want to work on click view code and it will open up the coding I apologize for it being slow that's because it's, it's doing a lot of stuff in the background and this one here at the bottom is 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 the deactivate worksheet uh, visible to hidden so as soon as you click another button tab that will disappear when I want to edit a page all I do is is select all that and click cut and then go back to the page and then you'll see we need to go onto our tables page to see where we get the information from so the site visit planner we're looking for here the site locations so we go to the site visit planner uh, data and up here you'll see it says um, you probably can't see it because it's, it's it might not be capturing that bit that high up but if you go to your, t your uh, data tab on, on your ribbon and then click your data validation on on there it will bring up this box and you click in list and it's asking where you're getting the information from so if you want to change that you can delete it click the up arrow to t so you can take it then you can go back to that tab that you that um oh and we needed to I'll tell you what we needed to do we needed to so take the coding out of the other one as well didn't we so cancel that off cancel go to the home page in fact we'll do it manually if we go to the uh, tables page and it is um, B24 down to B43 or 44 so the site visit planner um, data validation drop down list and it says full sites list A1 to A50 well it's actually tables so if I try this rather than taking the coding out again tables um, I, f I forgot what it said it was B something wasn't it B43 to B 50 so we'll, we'll change it anyway so it said I've got an error so I'm going to cancel that off because I haven't put the uh, correct drop down in so we're going to go back now to the tables page and I want to take the coding out of that as well so I'll go to the tables uh, view coding take out that cut and then you whatever that's cut out of there it won't hide that tab so now we go back to the visit planner uh, click the data tab data validation click the button we don't want that anymore so we, we're going to ask, we're going to take it to the tables page and we're going to select 24 
to 43 on there and then press enter so that's now adjusted that and apply that to all the cells OK so now we're going back to the tables um, view coding it's not there paste it back in and you'll see it's just the the hidden page then you say to close that down and again on this one paste close it down okay that's done so now you go back to the home page it will close them pages back down again so we'll go back to the site visit planner and now the sites we list we should show it will now show you the sites listing where it happens to be um, so your site we plan to visit the site and it might not be for an audit it might just be for a visit uh, so you just pick in here what it is uh, work from the site if you're going to work from the site for a day the reason so it's just a, an, a reminder and you, if, once you've said I've com I'm completed that you click the completed go down here archive completed and it's disappeared and with the others it's gone into the archive site visits page and there is site 5 completed so you see uh, yeah I'm you know, fingers and thumbs a bit at the moment with, with this but as you can see um, that's what it is this this tab here is visions and values basically that just takes you to the company's home page and it will show the visions and, and values of the company on that page it, it's just something that somebody said they might like in, in my organization so I, who am I to say not 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 to have it so then we've got the cost that's not changed at all that's still the same as you saw in the previous versions the same with the data the information on the data HSC website is self-explanatory click that and it will take you to the website so if you need to check something up very often I'll be doing something I'll have a couple of screens open I think oh, I need to go into HSC website to check something uh, so I thought I'll tell you what I'll do I'll put a tab on, on my system so I can do everything from within this system um, your power uh, pure authorized users organ chart which is just that with stuff taken out uh, project planner we've seen that before uh, go back to the home page logo page user list data and then the other tab is file a riddle so if you want to file a riddle or you've got another person that is competent and he's going to file a riddle you will click that and that will take you to the file a riddle page on the HSC website so that in a nutshell is, is basically it you see you've seen what it can actually do in previous videos these are just covering the changes within that so I'm hoping you're finding it useful guys if anything that you want then please please let me know um, and I'll, I'll try and sort something out for you um, a lot of you have been doing that I've been uh, emailing a couple of you back and forth that have wanted information uh, one poor guy lost it all, to, all together because his, his uh, hard drive crashed so I so resent him that back out but the, the beauty of that he was one of the first ones that had the dashboard so he had the very early one which thinking back now is not very good yeah so he's got the latest one now so I'm hoping he's going to be overjoyed at that and he can work with this when he sees a video so th so there we are guys um, as I say <clears throat> I think we've come to the end of the road on the updates um, so I may not put any more up if you think otherwise and you think actually I want to keep seeing these little videos or little tweaks um, especially if you want to see where I put the code in and how I do it uh, on this particular dashboard because if you want to change something I'm pretty sure you're going to think well where's the information for that very often if you scroll down to the tabs to the tables page and go down to around about 997 you'll start and see information on there and you and it's it is uh, got titles on it so you'll know what criteria is being changed in that box but what I would advise you to do very strongly if you go into them you know if you're going down to um, down to the um, pages with a lot of the information on if you start to mess around in here then make sure you save a backup before you do it because trust me I've done it and it, it, you get it wrong bang it, you, if you don't understand the coding you, you're working on then 
it, you, you lose the will to live. Uh, but as, I'll just go over it very briefly just to show you what you're looking at. So you'll see you've got the X value here for the overall D, uh, audit status. So we go over here, average audit. So we're saying it's, you can see when it's got a one, that means that is a light that's lit on the dashboard. Um, if it's NA, so what the coding is basically saying, it's saying is if cell F1057 is greater than or equal 1060 watt D1061 and F1057 is less than or equal 1061, then put in a one or not applicable. That's basically what that code is saying. And so here it's saying if um, F1057, which is that cell there, where 77 is, is greater than or equal to D1061, which is here. Um, and so the uh, 1061 is 75 and 100, and it's less than 10, E1061, which is there. So it's looking to see if the, if, the, if the number up there is between these ranges. So 77 is between 75 and 100. So it's, it's, that is a light accordingly, green, orange and, and red. Uh, so And then if you go down to the next one down, the task status is on red because we've got that now completed uh, archive task. So it's between 0 and 35. It's saying it's actually 0 because there are none outstanding. Uh, they are non-completed because we've archived them. It's picked that up, so it's put it saying the red light should be on, which it, it is. We've seen that, and it's zero to thirty-five between zero to thirty-five, and you can change that anyway, any any time you want to. Um, you, so oh, sorry, I'm distracted. You, you can change that to whatever you want. So you can be 0 to 25, 25 to 75, 75 to 100, whatever. It will still look for the number between them two, two numbers. And it's the same with, with everything else. Uh, where, where you see that type of working out with the NA and 1, that is a traffic light system. Okay, so again, thanks for following along, guys. Please um, click. Um, like and subscribe I'd appreciate that very much it just helps me with the motivation a bit um, apologies for me I'm not the yet very good at doing these videos as you know I want to just start the channel um, but as I get in get better at it I'll start and get better equipment uh, with better sound quality and stuff like that and I'll start doing little, little pieces on health and safety in general on the site uh, so thanks for, again for watching guys, I do appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.